Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in Coventry call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today I'm going to ask you to remember about a month back when we removed the spare tire, uh, the 25-year-old spare tire, because I didn't trust it anymore, and we left two holes in the trunk that we're gonna have to plug, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. But first, we have three Zeds of the week. And first up, we have Ronald from the Netherlands with his 1996 1.8 liter five speed he bought two months ago. It has 150,000 miles, and he says it's all original. It does need some minor work like brake pads, and currently the beautiful black hardtop is on it due to the rainy, cold Dutch weather. Very nice, Ronald. Next up is Chip from South Carolina with his 2000 M Roadster. Five speed with the S52 engine and a beautiful Alpine white, 84,000 miles. He says it's all original. He's just added a vanity plate and a front plate from Clemson University. Boy, I love that beautiful interior, Chip. Those two color interiors are my favorites. Chip also has a 2011 M3 with a V8, and he takes turns dailying the two cars. Very nice. Last but not least, we have Doug from New York State, who waited 20 years to get this 2002 2.5 liter 5-speed Roadster in Titan Silver Metallic. Now he's replaced the wheels, tires, drive shaft, flex disc, valve cover gasket, and radiator. Great car, Doug. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your beautiful cars. If you'd like to see your car on Zed of the Week, please follow the instructions in the description below. Before I go ahead and patch those holes in the trunk, I have a couple of suggestions from viewers about how they did it. I want to show you those first, and then we'll get to the way I did it. It's all pretty similar with some subtle differences, so here we go. First up, we have Walter, one of my frequent contributors who uh, sh really this is an ingenious way of doing it. He basically took the round bits from the original cage, cut those off, ground down the rough edges, and use those to plug the holes exactly as they did from the factory, but the rest of the cage isn't there. Thought that was pretty ingenious. Nice job, Walter. The only reason I didn't do that is that I do want to keep the cage in case I ever resell. Who knows? Hopefully I won't. The other solution was sent to me by viewer Rick Taylor, who actually uh, did something similar to what I did. Now, he found four and a half inch by three inch fender washers, an eighth of an inch thick, and he used uh, metric cap screws of 50 millimeter 10, one and a half inches long, 45 millimeter 12, one and three quarters inches long, and basically did what I'm doing. Uh, he wrote, washers go on interior and exterior of the holes, run cap screws up through them, and use the nuts from the original hardware or get new nuts. For extra protection, spray some Flex Seal or rubber undercoating spray on the exterior. Sounds pretty good and very similar to what we're about to do. Thank you so much, Walter and Rick. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the parts we're using first off. Uh, obviously, we were replacing this cage that held up the tray for the spare tire. Uh, to plug the holes, in the two holes, you got one here that would be covered by this, one here that would be covered by this. And to cover those holes, what I did was I went ahead and bought two four and a half inch stainless steel discs off eBay link in the description we're going to use those along with that we're going to reuse the rubber seals from the stock setup they're in perfectly good shape luckily so we're going to go ahead and reuse those and all you have to do is go ahead and just pull them off this one's a little tougher you got to stretch it a little bit it's especially tough when it's cold outside but just work it around and there you go so that's how we're going to replace that set up just like that now as far as replacing the two bolts that are here uh, oddly enough they turned out to be standard sizes uh, had my buddy pat 
from the channel Buell 109 measure those for me using his uh, tap and die set. And the large one turned out to be a 7 16 14, two inches long. And the smaller one turned out to be a 3 8 16 thread, uh, an inch and 5 eighths long. To replace those, found stainless steel bolts. That large one should work out just about perfectly. And then as far as the smaller one goes, I couldn't match the height exactly, so I bought a longer one and a shorter one. We'll see which one works, because of course you have to have enough, uh, enough extra bolt on top to go ahead and thread in the little tray. I definitely want to keep that in the car. So that's what we're going to be using. And as far as the discs go, uh, these came without the hole in them. I wanted to find fender washers in this size. They make four and a half inch fender washers, but what they usually come with is like a two and a half inch hole, and that wasn't going to work. So I just bought the, the blank disc and I went ahead and gave it to my buddy, gave them both to my buddy Pat at Buell 109, and he drilled them out and he's going to show us how. Okay, so first he used a disc he already had and a spring-loaded center punch to make a mark in the center of the first disc. And then he used that to drill a 3 8 inch pilot hole in the first disc. Put the second disc under the first disc and use that first hole as a guide to make his second pilot hole in the second disc. And then made sure that he was getting the right drill bits. Uh, double checked the diameter of the bolts. The 3 16 and 3 8 holes were drilled then into both. And then he came back with a 60 degree countersink on both sides of both discs. Thank you again, Pat. Hey, big shout out to Pat at his channel, Buell 109, for his help on this video. And he's helped me on many others. And with a lot of my car work, I certainly appreciate it. Now, I make videos, but Pat makes art, and you're going to want to see his next video. It's coming out really soon. It's in its final editing stages. It's going to be great, has great special effects, a ruggedly handsome star that you're really going to love. And I will let you know when that video drops, either during my next video or on a community post if it happens before then. Please check it out. He's working on reviving his channel. He really is a good filmmaker, and I'd like to send him our support. Thank you so much. So we've got the car up on the Rhino ramps and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the holes. If you remember correctly, there's the larger one and there's the one that goes along with the smaller bolt. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and plug those up. I've only put the car up on the ramps because that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to film. Otherwise you could probably do this without the ramps, although it will give you more room. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so we're underneath the car and I've put together the disc and the rubber seal and the bolt for the hole in the center of the trunk. And I'm going to go ahead and tape that up underneath with uh, some painter's tape. And of course, if you were working with another person, they could just hold that up for you. And then you could go up top and secure it. But I'm alone. So here we go. So back up inside the trunk and you can see the bolt sticking through and I'm going to go ahead and put the big washer on. Now I wish I actually had a little bit longer bolt because uh, this one is just barely big enough to thread the nut, but it is threading. And I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that down and there you go. The hole is sealed. Good as new. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side from up underneath and up top and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we've been back under the car and we've put the bolt and the disc and the seal up through just like we did before. And I've used the inch and a half bolt. An inch and three quarters is really what you'd like. I think an inch and five eighths was stock, but we're going to go ahead and put the washer on this. And what we're going to find, once we tighten that down, is 
and there's what it looks like. Once we tighten that down, it's just barely, there's barely going to be enough coming through to secure uh, this plastic tray. But So an inch and five eighths or an inch and three quarters bolt would be ideal. But that does, at an inch and a half, give you just enough bite. I couldn't get an inch and three quarters bolt in that size and thread. So I got what I got, but it's nice and tight. I'll go back in and snug it up with a wrench. And that'll give me a little bit more space to put that uh, nut on there to hold the tray in. But it's there. It's fine. And I also went ahead and using this T-handled wrench that is part of your car, uh, I went ahead and I tightened that down a little bit past finger snug. Don't want to lose my brand new work. And voila, let's take a look under the car. And what you've got, there's the center one. There's the one on the passenger side and you have a very nice, almost factory look without having to own a factory. So there you have it folks, pretty simple. Some new parts, some old parts, and now no more holes. Thank you so much for joining me on a rather chilly day here in Florida. If you found this content valuable, please crush that like button as always. And until next time, remember, friends don't let friends drive boring.